just, I'm just, that's just bizarre. It's a little interesting to me that you would pull that statistic out and talk about that in relation to school safety and suicides, but I'll leave it at that. Um, I have a question for Ms. If I could just respond, just if I could just respond to that, Sheriff. Sure. Uh, I just wanted to bring up that up because we, we believe that red flag laws are something that um, can can increase school safety and that another benefit of red flag laws uh, are that they can address suicides. Um, but you don't see that as a targeting of rural Arkansas or rural America, like that statistic? You know? No, I, I, I would hope that what we would be doing there is, is offering a solution to something that is that is happening in reality, that um, that we do see these increases in suicide happening across the country and that red flag laws are something that can address those and so hopefully we can see a reduction in those suicides. Okay, like I said, I'll leave it at that. Um, Question for you: When you, Ms. Ms. Jorgensen, you said moms demand action, um, is you're trying to be proactive, and that we failed our children if the shooter had already gotten there. Do has any of your chapters started any type of after-school programs for your schools, or have any of your chapters actually tried to do any type of volunteer work at the schools as far as counseling or mental? Health or, or after school programs or anything like that? What we do is we have reach out. Do you have any outreach efforts outside of your just legislative um, policy advocacy? Do you have any other specific to different schools and the areas that you, I think, had up on your mind? We do. We have a program called Be Smart, which is store all firearms securely and um, separately from ammunition model responsible behavior, ask about guns in other people's homes, um, recognize the risks of teen suicide, and tell other people to be smart. And we know a lot of school shooting, um, school shooters get their guns from their family's home. And um, we know that a lot of unintentional shootings happen with children accessing firearms and homes. And so we, we try and shout that message from anywhere at the left. <laughs> We what? offered it at schools, churches, PTAs. From what schools? Can you just tell me which ones that you've done this program at? Yes, uh, Plasky Heights, United you know, Methodist Daycare. Um, I have offered it at several schools here in Little Rock and have yet to set up dates. Um, we do it at um, National Night Outs. We. Um, your other chapters across the state on your map, mm -hmm. have they, any of them been? Yes, Conway has done several churches. Um, it seems like schools have been less excited to have us, maybe because they think we're political. But churches have been very receptive to our message. <laughs> maybe. And, um, maybe we're and political. Yeah. And then, um, Mr. Uh, you said that you supported this uh, legislative efforts in different states. Mm -hmm. So I'm assuming, did, were you just, I'm assuming, did you do that just by advocacy? Did you hire lobbyists? Um, how much, I mean, how much money? I know that generally goes hand in hand, but would you disclose that? I mean, we, uh, so uh, every town has Moms and Men, uh, Moms and Men Action chapters in every state. Uh, we also have uh, uh, lobbyists that work in states across the country um, in these red flag laws that have passed across the country uh, we've had a variety of levels of uh, supporting that legislation whether it just be supporting it because we're the largest gun violence prevention organization in the country or that means that uh, people come to us so legislators come to us to help craft that because uh, obviously we have an expertise in that Okay, and then last question for me, and then I'll go to 